Hello, dear friends. May God bless all of you. Through the Holy Spirit, may God, God Himself, bless you with understanding. The Bible says, through the Apostle Paul, that the God of this age, the God of this age, has blinded the mind, or rather, the minds of people, of the unbelievers, those who do not believe in God. They do not believe in God because the devil blinded their minds. And that's why sometimes you question, oh, but why so and so? They saw the power of God, they've seen God's power, and still they don't surrender, they don't convert. Well, that's why. Because the God of this age, which is the devil, has blinded, has blinded people's minds. So you have to understand this side of the story, because sometimes we criticize a person and pour them, they therefore blinded their understanding. However, this is exactly what I pray for. May the God Almighty, the only Lord, the only one who truly is God, omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscient, the creator of all things, the God who is great, huge, may this God be with you to deliver you from this spiritual blindness if this has been your case. I don't think it is. I don't think it is. Because if you are participating in this transmission, it's because you are interested and there is inside of you a faith. And that's what we want to see happening, that you may understand God's purpose for your life in order for you to change and to have a life of quality. You know that through the Word of God, everything is made new. Everything, everything. From our conscience, our understanding, from the moment that we understand what God wants from us, then there is no demons, there is no hardships, no problems, there is no struggle that we won't be able to prevail against with God's understanding. However, as we said this week, we've been insisting on this, that the glory of the latter temple is greater than the glory of the former temple. You understood that it's a marriage, didn't you? Because God's marriage with the Israelites was through the temple that was made and laid with gold on the inside. But when the Israelites corrupted themselves and committed adultery, then God left that house, that temple, and obviously today, today, in our present day, after Jesus died and resurrected and ascended into heaven, He sent His Spirit to conduct, to bring people to the understanding of His will. So the Holy Spirit is the one who guides us into all truth. So there are people who still haven't received the glory of the latter temple, that I still waiting, waiting, still fighting, fighting against their own flesh, fighting against their own will, their own heart, their desires, their lusts, their dreams. So there is a conflict, a huge one, between, between doing the will of God and doing their own will. And this is the greatest war that we human beings face in order to finally 
see the glory of the latter temple descending upon us. This is too glorious. But when this happens, when you overcome your flesh, your will, your heart, and so on, when you overcome the world, then that's it. Then yes, you let go of everything and then the glory of the latter temple comes, which is the Holy Spirit. He descends upon you and make his dwelling place within you. That's it. Did you understand? I hope so. Praise God. I'm sure that the Holy Spirit will enlighten. He will make you understand this much better than the way I'm saying, because he's the one who convinces and not myself. Pay attention, please. The Apostle James... He was a half-brother of Jesus, Jesus' half-brother. He was the son of Mary and Joseph. Joseph was the son of Mary with God, with the Holy Spirit. The glory of God descended upon Mary, and she gave birth to Jesus, the Son of God. When the glory of God descends upon us, He turns us, into children of God, children of the Most High. Anyway, so the Apostle James used his Apostle to send a message to Christians, those who believed in God, not only the Gentiles who had converted, but also the Jews, the Jews. Then he says like this, because there were many conflicts inside of the church. At that time, there were problems inside of the churches already, even though they had seen the power of God. Even still, there were problems because where there's flesh, there's problems. Pay attention. He said, where do wars and fights come from among you? Where do they come from? Because this exists amongst the religious groups or inside of the Christian church. Then he says, do they not come from your desires for pleasures, from your desires for pleasure that war in your members? Then he speaks of these pleasures. You lust. You lust and do not have. You murder and covet. When he says murder is to hate, because to hate someone was to kill someone. When we hate someone, we are killing that person. We are in, in the position of a murderer. You murder and covet and cannot obtain you cannot obtain. You fight and war, yet you do not have because you do not ask. A person doesn't need to lust, to murder, to hate. They don't need to be envious. They don't need to fight a war in order for them to have a marriage with God, a covenant with God. If the Holy Spirit is in you, there is no need for you to war or to fight for your daily bread. No. Jesus taught his disciples to pray, saying, give us this day our daily bread. That's it. That's all you have to do. Did they have to fight and wage war and be upset with a brother, a sister, or whatever? I mean, so... The Apostle James, he identified this problem within the church. And he says, you ask and do not receive. But why do you ask and do not receive? Because you ask amiss. You ask amiss. What does it mean to ask amiss? You ask amiss that you may spend it on your pleasures. 
And this happened with those who believed in Jesus. Obviously, they didn't have the Holy Spirit, because if they did, they wouldn't be in this situation. The glory of God was not in them, and that's why the situation happened. But they were fleshly. They still didn't have the glory of God in them. And this happens within the churches, including the universal church of the kingdom of God. This happens as well. What can I do? You are dealing with human beings. Each one has their own heart. It's a land no one knows. Only the Holy Spirit. Yes or no? Only the Holy Spirit. So he says, these people who were Christians but were not the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit, the temple, the glory of God was not in them yet, even though it was available to them at the time, but they hadn't received the Holy Spirit. So he says, adulterers and adulteresses. Well, this is strong. He says, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? So, when a person has the glory of God, which is the Holy Spirit, within them, they turn their back on the world. Here, adulterers and adulteresses are not like those people who have, let's say, a lover. They have an extra marital relationship. No, this is not what it is. Because this is obvious, right? But he's talking about adulterers and adulteresses inside of the church. But not because they had committed adultery with other people. No. Because when a person is married with God, they have a covenant, they have been married to God, then they have nothing to do with this world. They do not aspire for anything of this world. Their dream is to please God. Their dreams is to do God's will and not the will of their flesh, not the will of their heart, not the will, you know, that desire to have this and that and the other, because these, these that people have, this desire, this lust for the things of the world, it's adultery before God. This is adultery, because they are forsaking the greatest glory, which is the presence of God, in order to get involved with the world, to commit prostitution with the world. And this is sinful, but a very bad sin before God. And that's why the Apostle speaks about jealousy and how the Holy Spirit is jealous of us. That's it. Because let's make this analogy. The Bible is full of analogies and comparisons. So he compares a person who is of God and committing adultery with the world, this person doesn't know that the Spirit of God is jealous of them. He doesn't want to share them with anybody. He doesn't share us with anyone. He doesn't share you with anyone. Did you know that, dear friends? This is very nice, very nice. But if you insist in wanting to share yourself with the world, then you are going to be quenching the Holy Spirit. And this is why you are going to lust and have nothing. You are going to murder and covet and fight and war with the strength of your arms, and you have nothing, which is what happens the most inside of the churches. And that's why we have those who say, look, I speak in tongues. Do I have the Holy Spirit? You speak in tongues, but you also speak lies. Well, well, well. How can a person full of the Holy Spirit lie, speak lies, live life in, with lies and deceit? So in all these, dear friends, we see that God has this extra care, this special care towards those who are His. 
towards those whom he dwells within. They have peace. The very first thing that happens when the glory of the latter temple descends and turns your life, your being, your body, your mind, your eyes, your ears, your mouth, he turns you into his dwelling place. That's exactly how it happens. When he dwells within you, you receive peace. You don't live with that lust, you know, without any self-control, with, with that anger because so-and-so did this to you, or they said something that you didn't like, or they didn't say hi to you. You are not envious of so-and-so's car, or, or clothes, or the dress, or the hair, or somebody's beauty. No. You have the glory of God within you. Do you understand? When you have the glory of God, you have peace. You do not live in the search for something new because you are already complete. You are complete. You are already happy because the Spirit of God makes us happy. He makes us be at peace. He makes us live what we believe in, what is written. So you are at peace in your little corner, in your nest, with your wife, with your husband. So you establish your family, you bring up your children within the same standard. The children will inherit this standard of faith, this standard of life, this standard of peace, peace within us. That's why yesterday I spoke about the moment Esther and I got married. Before that, I prayed. I said, my God, I do not want to make a wrong move concerning my love life because I know I would see my brothers with problems in their respective marriage. And I said, no, I don't want this, especially my older brother. It was a disaster. I said, no, my God, I don't want that. I want something that is forever. And Esther was in the same spirit. She had in her uncle, I don't know, someone in her family that was left by her husband and she suffered a whole lot and Esther saw that and said, no, I don't want this, my God. I want a servant of yours, someone who will complete me, who will satisfy me. You know, when you... My apologies, but... It's just a, a silly example, but you will understand this better. You know when you sit at the table and you eat a delicious meal that you are satisfied? You are satisfied. This is it. Very well. When the glory of the latter temple descends upon us, which is the Holy Spirit, we are satisfied. We are at peace. We go to sleep at peace. We get up at peace. We live at peace. We work at peace. We are able to perform better at work because we are at peace. We have peace. And then we are happy. We get happy. We are satisfied. Wow, how glorious, how glorious this word is. So, the Apostle James says, adulterers and adulteresses. It's not that they were having an affair. No. It's because they had friendship with the world. They wanted the kingdom of God, but they also wanted the kingdom of the world. And it's not possible. Either you choose the kingdom of God and live according to his rules, or you opt for 
you choose for the kingdom of this world and live according to its rules. It's not possible for a person to want with one foot in the world and another one in the kingdom of God. It doesn't work. Because what reigns over this world is the devil. Whoever submits to the kingdom of this world submits themselves to Satan himself. And whoever submits to the kingdom of God submits exclusively to the Lord Holy Spirit, who is the guide, who leads, who guides, who conducts our lives, our mind, into all truth. So the person has to choose. This is a personal decision. The same happened with Adam and Eve there in the garden. They chose evil, so they reaped the fruit. So God gives us discernment in order for us to choose what is right, what is fair, what is correct, so that then we will reap the fruit of righteousness, the fruit of what is good, of what God gives us, so he says, adulterers and adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whoever, therefore, wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Come on, this is too strong. Wow. Sometimes the person fights, fights, fights because the devil is there in their life. They, they have nothing to do with God, so the devil prevails over their life. The devil overcomes them because they have nothing to do with God. They are God's enemy. If they were God's friends as Abraham was, then God himself would make sure to defend Abraham. And that's what he did. He guided Abraham for 175 years. Or rather, 100 years, because he revealed himself to Abraham when Abraham was 75, and Abraham lived 175 years. So God was with Abraham for 100 years, guiding, leading him, despite of Abraham's weaknesses when he listened to Sarah. But this is another story. What matters is that he died in old age. Old age. Why? Because he was a friend of God. And when we see Abraham, when we read his story, wow, we get, let's say, full of faith because he was a man of faith. However, the world today is not the same. People are inside of the churches. Not everyone, of course. There are exceptions. Not many, but praise God for them. These are exceptions indeed. So these are the glory of God wherever they go, wherever they are. Ah, how wonderful. Such a glorious thing. I wish I could pass on to you or have the words to tell exactly what will make you understand with perfection what is written in the Holy Scriptures. Whoever, therefore, wants to be a friend of the world makes himself. So the person themselves makes themselves an enemy of God. So you want to be a friend of the world. Then you become an enemy of God. It's not the devil. Sometimes the person puts the blame on the devil, but it's their own flesh. The person chose, they chose to serve the world. And then, game over. That's why he also says, Or do you think, or do you think that the scripture says in vain? Then, comma, the spirit who dwells in us yearns jealously. That's it. The Holy Spirit that dwells in me, he is jealous. Just like a wife who is jealous of her husband, of her husband, 
or the husband who is jealous of his wife and they do not want to share them with anybody else. Yes or no? Isn't it how it is? This is true love. Of course, that true love doesn't burn in jealousy, but it has that natural jealousy that is in every human being. The Holy Spirit is jealous of those who are His, and He doesn't accept to share us with anybody. If we insist, then we will be quenching the Holy Spirit. We will grieve the Holy Spirit in us, and then we are going to reap the fruit of such unfaithfulness. Ah, dear friends, this is too great, too glorious. This is glorious. God is too great. He does not deal with us like, oh, He's all the way up there, far away, and He left us down here completely unattended. No. No way. He said Himself, I dwell in the high and holy place, but also with Him who has a contrite and humble spirit to revive the spirit of those who are still living far away from him. You who desire, you who want, God also desires. He wants to dwell inside of you. More than you need, he wants to dwell in you. And as long as you don't surrender a hundred percent and you don't let go and as long as you don't, come on, what's the word? As long as you don't strip yourself off of, of all your clothes and you go, I mean spiritually, of course, as long as you don't go to the altar, and you don't give all of your life, your dreams, your desires, your lusts, everything. Oh Lord, here it is. I give the world that was in me. I remove it from me and I place it here on the altar. Here's my life. Then yes, when you do that, the Holy Spirit comes. Which is represented by the offering. The offering represents our soul. It represents what's inside our heart. That's what God does, dear friends. He patiently waits for each person to make their own decision, make their own choice. And there is the kingdom of the world. The kingdom of the world is the kingdom of hell. And there is the kingdom of God, the kingdom of peace, of life, and life more abundantly. May God bless you. May God bless you. Listen, you see that the analogy between God and men, human beings, the temple and God making men his dwelling place, this is marriage, husband and wife, a wife and her husband. They both together. They both there, faithful to one another, loyal, living at peace. I'm satisfied. I found my love. Now I don't have to try anything else. I don't need any adventure anymore. I found my true love. That's what God wants. If you want to learn how to love, just as you have been learning about faith, you need to learn how to love as well. Today is the day that we have chosen to teach those who are interested how to love. How to love. When we love God, we learn to love the person, especially those who are close to us, which is the husband or the wife. Did you understand? Tonight, here in the Temple of Solomon, at 8 p.m. sharp with Renato and Cristiani, you are our guest. But not only here, but also at any universal church. 
wherever there is a universal church of the kingdom of God, the pastor and his wife will be there to give to you what they have received, what they have received from God. May God bless you all, and I see you tomorrow in the name of the Lord Jesus, if His soul allows. Praise God.